Alright guys, how are you doing? And welcome back to Forza Motorsport 7. Now today, I am going to be testing out the two brand new Hyundais which have come into the game on the same day that they were released in real life. This is the Hyundai Veloster Turbo and the other car we're going to be doing is the Hyundai Veloster N which is basically the upcoming performance brand for Hyundai with one of the guys from the M division now working for them but anyway this is the normal model the turbo we'll just take a little look around here right now and i have to say starting with them rims right there they look absolutely immense on this car we obviously had to fit the channel logo on there as well just to represent we've got some turbo badging on the side skirts right there if you can see there we go and the most improved area i would have to say is this rear end because the older one wasn't exactly floating my boat, it was pretty damn alien-like, I must say. But the coolest feature of this car, as I'm sure you know, with the Veloster sort of trademark, it's got one door on this side, and as you can see there, it has got two doors on the other. Which is a really, really cool feature. But anyway, let's jump in and see what the interior is like. This is completely fresh to me, guys. I've not driven this car yet. So, yes. We're here in the pits of the Virginia International Raceway, and we're going to check this thing out right now. There we go. We've got the big infotainment system right there. We've got an automatic gearbox in this thing, but we can obviously change gears with the flappy paddles. And I have to say, for a Hyundai, it's not too bad in terms of quality. And I kind of want to give these cars a bigger chance than what everyone else is seeming to give them, because they're kind of like the underdogs of the performance brand right now, if you know what I mean, because people just have that mindset of, oh, it's a Hyundai, it's going to be crap. Don't judge until you drive it. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to judge it when I'm driving it. So let's get driving it. Right, so for the first lap, I'm going to be driving in the cockpit view just to get myself warmed up with this track. But first of all, let's hear how this little 1.6 litre turbocharged engine sounds. That is pretty damn meaty, I must admit, and this isn't even the end version yet. So anyway, let's get going. Spinning the tyres a little bit. Now, I need to warm up, as I says. So this is kind of like a warm-up lap with this little thing. Straight away, acceleration isn't too bad for what it is. Little sports car. Can it, oh, I wouldn't really call it a sports car. It's one of our sporty coupe hatch thing it's it's a weird it's a weird 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 category this car falls into i know it's technically meant to be like a hot hatchback but still it's weird very very weird but anywho the steering pretty damn direct bear in mind this is a front wheel drive car so you need to watch when you're putting your power down and else it'll just spin i've got tracks control and stability control off but first impressions through the first couple of corners Quite direct, quite direct indeed. Hitting, nearly hitting 7,000 RPMs there. Before we change gear, we're gonna need a break, how are these? Oh, they could use a little bit of work. They could use a little bit of work, but first impression of it says, steering's good, sounds amazing, but the brakes could use a little bit more spice. But they could, hang the arse out a little bit there. Wait, 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 we're breaking into this corner. Yeah, the front end, the front end is amazing on this man. It's so good. You know what I say? It's definitely up there with like the Golf GTIs, and this is just the turbo model. So wait till we get to the end. Now this thing, as I said, it's got a 1.6 litre turbocharged inline four engine, pumping out 250 horsepower and 260 foot pounds of torque. Zero to 60 is six seconds flat, and it has a top speed of 160 miles an hour. So now on to the funny figure about this car, and that is that it actually weighs less than the N version, because this weighs 3,042 pounds, or if you're here in the UK, that's 1,379 kilograms. Now, the N actually weighs near enough about 90 pounds more than this, which is kind of strange, but yet again, it's got a bigger engine than this, and it's also got like some aerodynamic parts, so that's probably the reason why. And also, this thing 
has a quicker 0 to 60 time as a sort of 6 second and we shall tell you the 0 to 60 time of the end when we get to it. Now that mirror is shaking like crazy. <laughs> it's mental but what can we get in terms of top speed down this straight? We're going to need to change up to 5th. 133, that's not too bad. I must say it's not too bad. Now we get to the twisty S section going down the hill. You need to watch when you put down the power man, that's the one thing that I have to say about front wheel drive cars as I mentioned, it's kind of tricky to judge when you put down the power. Go, 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 go. Yeah, it just holds on, it really, really does hold on, this little thing. Quite surprising for a brand that is normally quite known for just like little small cars and not exactly being very, very sporty. Anyway, onto the lap on the outside view. Sounds extremely, extremely crackly on here as well, and the outside view. It feels lightweight as well, man. It really, really does. I know it's like 3,000 odd pounds, but it honestly does not feel that heavy. Just scampers, man. That's the best word to say for this car. It just scampers the corner to corner. A little bit of body roll, but that adds to the fun factor. Seriously, I like body rolling cars. I mean, not too much of it, but yet again, it is just a laugh. It really is, like, the little MX-5 Miata, that's a laugh because it is quite a lot of body roll. Third, I'm going to need to break again. For being the basic model, it is great. It is really, really great. Okay, that section's a tough bugger. It really, really is. You need to be on the ball for that one. So coming up to the downhill bit, breaking, breaking, breaking. So it's a nice smooth car as well, definitely have to say that. Steering, when you're on the ball, when you're getting the right lines, very, very smooth indeed. Get down to the second for this one. Whoa, getting a bit wide there, getting a bit wide. <laughs> some, of the, some of the corners on this track can catch you out, it's a very, very complex track. That's why I brought it here, because it's not the fastest track in the world, but it just tests out front wheel drive cars like this tremendously. Into fourth. Oh god, I might have went in there too quick. Oh, oh we're just, just breaking in time there, just breaking in absolute perfect timing. Locking up the front wheels there. Oh, go, go. So we got 133 last time around in here. What can we get now? Look at the thing, it's manky. <laughs> it's absolutely manky. That's the problem about a yellow car. We need to go to the car wash a lot. We really do now. In the fifth gear, I think we're going to get the same. 134, we're going to need to break, sunny boy. Oh. <laughs> yes. But overall, first impressions nearing the end of the lap. For the base car, it's very, very good. So we're going to need to see how the end copes in a little second. But overall, I like the looks of it, I like the noise of it. In the handling for not being the performance model, it is great. It is a fun little car, and that is really all that should matter in a car that looks like this. All about the fun, man. So, anyway, let's jump into the end version and see how much of a difference there actually is. And here it is, right here. Now, I love how this thing is essentially just ripping off the M cars because we've got the little N badge right there and it's got obviously bigger bumpers and stuff like that, some red accents to make it sporty. I just love what this guy's actually done. He's come over from the M division and he's basically just went, yeah, that works at BMW, let's just make it work at Hyundai. Seriously, it's great, 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 great. So we get bigger brakes on this model as well with the N logo on them. Very nice side skirts, I actually prove of these side skirts. I'm not normally a guy that does like sort of sporty side skirts, but these do look good with another N badge. So it's essentially get the exact same sort of game going as BMW with the M badges, because we've got another one on the rear as well. The diffuser, that is massive. It really, really is massive. Same with the exhaust pipes on this, which is meant to sound very nice. It sounded great in a trailer. And we've got a bigger wing on the top as well, like a proper, look. it kind of looks aftermarket, but I think it just suits the car 
nicely. It's not too big or not too out there or anything like that. But anyway, it's a very, very handsome car. And to me, to my eyes, the proportion kind of reminds me of the Volvo XC30. I don't know if any of you guys think that, but it's them sort of proportions. But anyway, I presume the interior is going to be roughly the same as it is in the Turbo. And it's actually, oh, it does look a little bit different. The, the turbo actually had a little bit more colour in here. Because look at that, this one's more blacked out, a lot more sort of focus on the road. We've got a manual in this one, that is good. That is very, very good, unlike the turbo. I'm sure you can get that as an option anyway. Essentially the exact same interior, but with a manual. But anyway, let's head out onto Virginia and see how she sounds. Sounds a lot more crackly and a lot more throaty than the other one, but anyway, let's get going. Spinning the wheels yet again. Oh god, you can <laughs> Yep, you can feel the acceleration difference. My my man, that's good. Uh, the brakes, let's see if it's improved over the model. Yes, they have. My god. The first the, the normal one was really good, right? But the steering in this. Oh, okay, okay. It's brought it up to a new game. That is only the first corner and all. But you can feel it. You can definitely feel it. That's why I love doing back-to-back -back tests. Because you can just tell the difference in the cars. God, literally the, the littlest taps on the analog stick for the controller. It just turns, man. My God. That is so good, man. So good around these corners. So there we go, underneath the Nissan bridge. We need to break, break, break for this uphill right hander. It gets turned in. Yeah, you know how I said the front end of the turbo was good? This is even better. Jesus. It's got the delicacy of an ice skater, man. So freaking good. I know I'm using basic vocabulary, but that's what this thing's actually resulted me in. Just bumfounded, man. Absolutely bumfounded with this. Downhill, here we go, turn in. Yeah, Volkswagen uh, Ford. Uh, I think you better be worried. Is this <laughs> I mean, I haven't even done a full lap in this yet, and I can already say this is definitely better than some of the GTIs in this game. So if you go up against a Golf R, I still think this thing would give it a good run, man. Maybe on the straightaway the Golf R would just get away, but still through the corners. Absolutely amazing. There we go. <laughs> Freaking Squirrel X mode engaged them. Engage the brakes. <laughs> but anyway, let's get to the specs of this thing. It is a bigger. 2 liter twin turbo 4 cylinder engine pumping out 270 horsepower and 260 foot pounds of torque. 0 to 60, as I said, this is actually slower to 0 to 60 than the turbo model, with 6.2 seconds compared to 6 seconds for the turbo. And the top speed in it is 165 miles an hour, which is 5 miles an hour more than the normal turbo model. Um, that is actually up there with some of the hot hatch big boys because. Ford Focus RS, I believe is around about 170 miles an hour that goes, maybe a wee bit quicker. So it's not too far off from that, which is crazy to think, man. Moment mental. Anyway, let's jump into the outside view. God, you hear the difference in the exhaust now, can't you? Crackling like a mofo, really, really good. But here comes the weight. It's 3,109 pounds, or 1,410 kilograms, and as I mentioned, this is actually a little bit heavier than the turbo. Thanks to obviously like the spoiler and like everything else and that, the bigger engine and everything like that. So yeah, but honestly, driving it back to back, you really don't feel the difference. You really don't. That extra sort of, I think, 30 odd horsepower, or 20 in this case I think it is, does make the difference. Okay. Breaky, 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 locking up the front tyres. Open out the third, that'll be better. Puts the traction down a bit better. 
so good for this is probably my favourite section for this car man, for both of them. So good in that little S section. And break. Oh yes. Now, probably the only downside that I have for both of these cars, if the brakes were a little bit stronger, then you're probably looking at one of the most ideal hot hatches out there. They've kind of brought the, the rally car side into this brand, if you know what I mean, because it sounds like a little rally car. That sort of high-pitched gargle. It's like a little wasp. It's the Korean wasp. <laughs> That's what we should call it. The Korean wasp. Just paint it, paint it yellow like the turbo. It's the Korean wasp. It's coming to sting you. Oh yes, break, 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 break. I don't know, man. What is it with Korean cars recently that has been causing headlines? We've got the, the the Stinger, the Stinger GT from Kia. That is, that is really, really good in terms of being a hot sedan. And then we get this thing right here, the little Veloster and the i30N. It's mad. It is absolutely mad what they're doing. So it's great to see, great to see like these sort of underdog car companies finally getting the recognition they deserve and just going the sporty route. I like it. I really do like it. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. But overall first impressions of this car, the N, definitely, definitely a great addition to Forza. And a great addition to the Hyundai lineup. Personally, I like to see the Hyundai uh, i30 in because that would be more fun for me personally because I do like that car a little bit better than this in terms of looks. But yeah, great little cars, man. Great little cars. The pack is free. The Hyundai car pack is free, so there's no excuse if you own Forza 7. You need to get these things. You really, really do need to get these things. Obviously, I do prefer the N model because you can feel that, that initial acceleration change and the handling is a little bit sharper and crisper. But for both of them, they are great. They're absolutely great. So definitely check them out, guys. But thank you very much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, then a wee like is always appreciated. I mean it when I say it. Thank you so much for all the support. You guys are great. And if you want to follow us on any like social media and stuff, the links are in the description as always. But yep, remember to subscribe, hit that little notification bell if you are brand new to keep up to date with the new content pumping out with these packs and everything. But yeah, I'll see you in the next one from me and the Hyundai. Bye bye.